story of San Antonio from a presidio to a global city. And these are some of the assets, the cultural assets in which the, um, our campus is uh, connected. Oh, sorry, that was your turn. Hey, y este es el contexto en el cual vemos el desarrollo de la planeación en la que estamos viendo ahorita. La gran oportunidad que tenemos de la historia de San Antonio de un, de un presidio a una ciudad global, que es la visión que se tiene aquí. Entonces, nosotros en esta área no tenemos que contarles más sobre esta gran historia. I don't need to talk much about this area, the West Side, the culture and tradition of San Antonio. We're so pleased that the, the, the role that the downtown campus in particular plays with connecting to the West Side. And the East Side, uh, another anchor in our city uh, with a, a distinguished past and future that again offers opportunities relative to our campus. Y el este también que provee tantas partes de culturales y todas las áreas donde también tenemos mucha uh, oportunidad de participar con la comunidad ahí. En el South Side, whether it's the Missions, the uh, Mitchell Lake Audubon Center o Stenson Field. Las misiones que tienen también traen una gran riqueza cultural en la cual hemos tomado en cuenta para la planeación que hacemos aquí. And then lastly, we return downtown, probably the newest entrant into our neighborhood, um, the, the tech block and growing San Antonio's tech ecosystem. Y regresamos ahora al centro de la ciudad, donde estamos creando esta tech block, ¿verdad? Donde se está utilizando la tecnología y las compañías que están trayendo, atrayendo a otros tipo de comunidades también aquí en el centro. So one of the things that we did as a part of this uh, master plan is to look currently where the University of Texas at San Antonio partners. And so you see the list of our existing partnerships just from a quick canvassing of some of the things that are going on. Now unfortunately the font is a little small to be able to read them, so we graphically represented them on our, our map. But what we're trying to do with both the downtown campus as well as at 1604 is to accelerate these partnerships, to be more embedded in our community, and the master plan should enable that, those kinds of connections. La otra cuestión que hicimos para, como estamos planeando para el desarrollo urbano de la, de, de, de la universidad, es también ver dónde teníamos esas conexiones con la comunidad, donde ya estábamos haciendo algún tipo de servicio. Estos puntos representan de todo el tipo de servicios que tenemos con, perdón, con la universidad extensiva que tenemos ahí, pero eso ha sido solamente el principio que hicimos para ver lo que ya estaba pasando en la comunidad y representarlo en este mapa. Oh, um, sure. What I would probably prefer to do rather than read them, because I'm not sure that I can see that from here, to tell you the truth, is to give you a list. All right. Oh, sure. Okay, so hold on. Actually, I'll have to go up here. Can we have somebody back there maybe read them for us? Oh, I'll go back there. San Antonio College, San Antonio Municipal Support, San, San Antonio Family Endeavors, St. Peter St. Joseph Counseling Center, um, University of Incarnate Word Counseling Center, Edgewood ISD, St. Phillips College, San Antonio Museum of Art. Those are just a couple. And I, I'd be happy to, th these will all be posted up on the web um, so you can get a little bit more of a sense. To borrow a line from uh, Dr. Roger Enriquez, one of our outstanding faculty in the College of Public Policy, our overarching goal in this master plan is to build more bridges from hope to opportunity. We recognize that our downtown campus in particular sits in a very particular context, and what we're hoping to do is to engage in a much more deep fashion um, and to accelerate um, the success of all of our surrounding communities in an important way. Así como dice nuestro profesor Roger Enriquez, es, él tiene aquí una, una frase que utilizó, que juntos podemos crear, construir más puentes de esperanza a oportunidad. Y en verdad, estamos, uh, esto ha sido algo que tomamos como fundamento para la creación de los nuevos edificios, lo que estamos pensando, cómo nos integramos con la comunidad. So, for example, currently, IUTSA enrolls uh, this last year 941 students from the west side. 
been identified by these zip codes. Now granted, I recognize that the zip codes aren't an exact um, uh, representation of that area, but for us, relative to being able to pull this data, that enables us to pull the number of students. That's an increase of 15% compared to 2014. What we're hoping by having our campus downtown is we can grow that substantially. Um, UTSA, for example, provided $1.2 million in scholarships in this last year to uh, Westside students, which was about half again as much as provided from the state of Texas. What we're hoping to do, for example, this is an increase of about 40% since 2014. We believe by having a much more intentional presence, we can do even better through fundraising, through an open campus that I think should be able to serve our students even more. Is this an example of the, uh, can you go back to the Yes, yeah. oh, sure, sorry. <laughs> this is an example of the desarrollo y the intentional that we have here in the website. For example, we have 941 students identificados por esas áreas, códigos de áreas, ya sabemos que eso no es exacto, pero era la manera que podíamos usar para traer la información a ustedes. Pero en, en verdad el punto aquí es de que ha incrementado 15% desde el 2014. Hemos estado haciendo, atrayendo estudiantes de estas áreas para a UTSA y con el desarrollo que estamos haciendo, no solamente de edificios, de programas también, Es, vamos a, la idea es atraer más estudiantes para que haya más oportunidad. 80% son primera vez que van al campus a, a estudiar, a, a tener un bachelor's, pero lo importante también es que se han dado un millón, 1.2 millones de dólares en ayuda financiera a esos, a, esos, a esos estudiantes, que es más que lo que se ha dado del Estado. Así es que San Antonio, UTSA, ha estado invirtiendo En estos, uh, en estos estudiantes. Ahora, podemos hacer más, obviamente, queremos hacer más. Podemos hacerlo este, con, trayendo más inversión para que haya más uh, fondos para darles para estos estudiantes. Our uh, K-12, uh, excuse me, P-20 programs as well as our, as our College of Education, for example, are working deliberately with Linear High School on access to college, on a Civic Leadership Academy, business scholars and dual credit. Again, this is a model that we would like to expand and to deepen by increasing our presence here on the downtown campus. Este es un ejemplo de las actividades y programas que tenemos aquí, específicamente con la Escuela Lanier en la high school, donde hemos con los programas que son de K, de, K, de kinder al 12, donde se han estado haciendo esfuerzos para poder avanzar, que los estudiantes vengan a tener educación. Um, education uh, in the university. Uh, UTSA currently has transfer advisors at both San Antonio College as well as Northwest Vista directly cited in the community college to try and ease transfer and enable uh, more students to be successfully navigating that pipeline. Estamos también enfocados en traer uh, consejeros para poder ayudar a que puedan entrar a, a la universidad y seguir en la universidad con este consejeros que están en los estos lugares en San Antonio College y North Vista College. And lastly, many of you are probably familiar with our Institute for Economic Development and its programs. This is one that's specifically oriented towards historically underutilized business participation. We've served over 5,000 clients, procured over a billion dollars in contracts since its lifetime. And again, this is, these are the kind of services by having a broader presence that we hope to engage. This is another program where we have this program in particular, it's part of our campus here in the center, in the downtown, and it's helping the development of businesses por medio de entrenamiento o conseguir financiamiento. Hemos ayudado a más de 5,000 eh, clientes o negocios que han empezado, eh, que han pasado ahí por nuestras puertas. So, what are we trying to do? Imagine a seamless, porous downtown campus that celebrates our distinctive heritage and cultures, that's deeply engaged in our neighborhoods, and is really focused on access and increasing college going. Y lo que queremos lograr con esta presentación hoy es que ustedes nos acompañen a imaginarse un campus donde está completamente integrado con la comunidad en la que existe, eh, celebrando nuestra 
nuestro heritage, nuestros valores, nuestra, zona, nuestra cultura y eh, que esté eh, enganchado en realidad en, los, en las, en las, uh, en las, en las, en las, um, las vecindades, gracias, en las vecindades en que está alrededor de ella y eh, enfocado en acceso a, a, a la universidad y que con estos estudiantes continúen y que puedan graduarse de ahí. So with this master plan, what we're hoping to serve, what we're hoping to do is to serve 10,000 students, to increase our P, K through 20 pipelines. We're looking into different models of creating network, uh, excuse me, network, neighborhood alliance hubs. And then we're dedicated to fundraising and advocacy for increased scholarships to increase our college going access. Y el total de estudiantes que intentamos que servir aquí en el, en el centro son de 10,000 estudiantes incrementar lo que es lo que estamos hablando de kinder hasta la educación académica y también crear esas alianzas con las vecindades con las que estamos aquí alrededor para y crear lugares específicos donde podemos tener presencia en estas vecindades también y estamos comprometidos en seguir uh, buscando a alianza con financieros para que nos den poder conseguir los fondos para poder seguir ayudando con ayuda financiera para los estudiantes y continuar siendo eh, la voz que, uh, que sigue llamando esa atención para traer más ayuda financiera para los estudiantes. With this master plan, we're, we plan to share our facilities with our communities to mutual benefit. We aim to increase the green space to encourage recreation and, and uh, well-being, promoting and celebrating the heritage and art that's unique to San Antonio, providing in-community learning experiences uh, that benefit all, and then finally supporting small businesses and they're advancing their economic growth. Y con este plan maestro queremos uh, compartir nuestros uh, edificios con la comunidad, eh, incrementar el espacio a las áreas verdes y también promover el arte y nuestra cultura y proveer eh, experiencias de la, que donde la comunidad pueda venir a aprender de las muchas cosas que tenemos la universidad para ofrecer y apoyar a los a, negocios pequeños. The UTSA Campus Master Plan will articulate a roadmap to guide the university's future development, investment, and growth, to advance academic excellence. Success of our diverse students, and to promote the social and economic vibrancy of our communities by access to knowledge of all. draws from the university. Oh, all, like, I know, it's not working. Uh, so, <coughs> draws from the university and community's history, legacy. I know it's not working. It's not working. I hear you. I know. Sure. Why don't you start? You all can read it. <laughs> The master plan will articulate a roadmap to guide the university's future development, investment, and growth to advance academic excellence for success to our diverse students and to promote the social economic vibrancy of our communities by access and knowledge development. The plan draws from the university's and community's history, legacy, leverages local assets, and projects forward-looking framework for UTSA's future. Y lo que queremos de escribir con, este, con esta misión, con este párrafo, es de todo lo que acabamos de hablar, que nuestro plan está basado, está comprometido en lo que es nuestra cultura, eh, traer la, el, el master plan o el plan maestro es un mapa, es como una guía para nosotros cómo desarrollar nuestro campus. So es, una, es una idea de cómo podríamos nosotros utilizar lo que tenemos aquí disponible. Eh, y es para planear nuestras inversiones a futuro. ¿Cuándo vamos a seguir creciendo? ¿Qué edificio sigue? ¿Cuándo? Eso nos ha como les digo, es un mapa para eso. Pero está basado en las cosas que acabamos de hablar. Lo que es importante para nosotros es traer desarrollo económico para donde estamos y continuar dando acceso a la comunidad que servimos. Y está basado en nuestra cultura entre las raíces que estamos este, reforzando y que queremos seguir reforzando. Okay. I will turn over to Brian. Okay. 
So what we're going to do tonight is, uh, after that, is to show you what the current draft plan is for the property that the university controls and some properties that have been discussed that are public lands that may become uh, part of university uh, facilities in the future. So everything that, uh, that they just were mentioning was about the broader vision of the university in the community. We're going to now dive in and focus a little bit more specifically on the property. Um, was it, if, if a translation is needed, uh, Linda? Well, I asked at the beginning and nobody said they needed it. Is there somebody now who needs a translation? We can do that if you do. Si hay alguien que necesita traducción, por favor, me indica. So, at the last, if you were at the last uh, work session, we showed some guiding principles for the campus development. These are specific to the downtown uh, campus. And we asked for feedback on these principles and, and things that were important, things that you wanted to see. Uh, and we've read through all of those. We've taken all the, the comments, anything that's come through email. Uh, and we are highlighting here not all of them, but the ones that kind of came up time and again. Uh, the first principle was to promote community partnerships. You've heard a little bit about that uh, already. Um, some of the things under that, uh, under that uh, concept that we have really heard strong support for were a desire for connection to the west side neighborhood, uh, support for a campus that would be accessible to the community and serve the residents, uh, and then support for collaboration with local cultural institutions like Zona Cultural, uh, Casa Navarro and others. The master plan development is really looking for how can we make these connections happen and promote these partnerships. Uh, some of that will happen through uh, looking at where do those connections need to happen. Uh, you see a couple of uh, strong east-west axes there. Uh, one of those is commerce, one of those is Buena Vista and Dolorosa, uh, and the third one, uh, uh, secondary uh, in Nueva. We really feel that those are important axes to create this cross connection from the west side through the university uh, areas and into the downtown. How that will kind of take shape in, in more of a framework standpoint is improve the streetscapes, create connections over the railroad tracks, which are really a barrier right now, and also integrate with some of the open spaces that are proposed in the plan. You see there in orange a series of different open spaces. One of those exists today, which is the Bill Miller Plaza, uh, but then some new open spaces that are proposed. The second principle was to embrace the urban environment of San Antonio. We heard a desire for more open space and amenities uh, that would be accessible to the community, not just the, uh, the university uh, student, faculty, and staff. And then connections to areas that are already in the neighborhood, such as Market Square and Milo Park. This is looking at the long-term development vision uh, for the parcels. You can see the brighter colored areas are those that the university currently controls. And the ones that are faded back here are ones that have been at high-level discussions of potentially becoming future uh, Say a future university uh, property or partnerships through uh, connections with TxDOT and the city of San Antonio. And this is a, a conceptual vision of what that might look like. Um, embracing that urban environment of San Antonio, this is going to be a more compact campus to be able to accommodate the number of students uh, and activities and amenities that are proposed to be within the plan. Uh, that means that you know, buildings probably can't be as low as they are out at 1604. They need to be uh, academic buildings, maybe in the six to eight story range, uh, housing buildings anywhere from eight and up to maybe 15 stories as shown in the plan. That really takes that urban environment uh, and maximizes it for the potential of the campus. But within there, we're trying to show some, to provide some variation that you might have some lower scale uh, buildings in some spot, spots and some higher scale buildings in other spots. The other thing that we're uh, really trying to do here, maybe if I back up one, is to work with the grid of 
of San Antonio. And in some places, that doesn't actually exist today, particularly on these parcels over here. Uh, but sort of re-implementing it uh, in places where it either has existed in the past or uh, where it hasn't existed and can be kind of stitched together. That doesn't mean that they're all going to be streets with cars on them, but that they're pathways that might be pedestrian in nature, they might be bicycle, uh, and they might be vehicular, but they create opportunities for connection at multiple levels. The other thing we want to look for opportunities to do is to really embrace the local uh, art and culture of San Antonio. So we'll look for opportunities where we can utilize local artists uh, and local programs to really celebrate San Antonio on the campus or in uh, the surrounding areas. The third principle was to enhance pedestrian connections uh, and to surrounding areas and between the campus. The campus itself will not be a contiguous campus from every block to every block. So it's really important for the campus to be able to connect, but then also for, to be able to promote these partnerships that we've talked about to create easy connections to the neighborhood. We heard that there was a, really, a real desire for safe and comfortable sidewalks and a need to enhance connections to public transit. Again, I mentioned this before, but uh, Buena Vista and Commerce become very important uh, east-west connections to make sure that we get across the railroad tracks uh, into the west side and all the way linking into downtown. Within the framework of the properties themselves, we are looking at uh, a connection over the railroad tracks that would be pedestrian and bicycle in nature that would pair with the vehicular access ways that are there now. Those are really vehicular oriented only. Uh, so we're looking for opportunities to make safe and comfortable pedestrian connections across the railroad tracks. And then improvements to Dolorosa, uh, Buena Vista, and Nueva uh, that, are, that will pair with some of the, the improvements that have already been and secured for commerce um, and create multiple linkages east to west. And then also, we'll show a, a zoomed in picture of this uh, in a minute, but Medina, as it moves north and south, is envisioned as a, an access through the campus to organize that area as a, a nice pedestrian environment, but also connect up to Via Centro so there's easy access uh, into the campus from Via. This conceptual rendering is looking, uh, if we're looking from the north to the south, this is Medina running right through the image here. Here's Frio Street. And then there we're seeing the access from the west side just cut off a little bit there, but here's the railroad tracks. So a pedestrian linkage that comes over the railroad tracks with an entry plaza at an elevated level that can come in and actually access directly into university facilities that would be open uh, and accessible to the public. And we're looking at the opportunities to really explore community partnerships in those buildings where you can have direct access across the railroad tracks and be in an uh, environment, whether it's a rec center um, or other uh, outward facing programs that can really uh, be right there at the front door. Those spaces can take on a lot of different um, forms, these, these uh, bridge connections, uh, they might be more landscape in nature uh, as an integrated form or something with you know, landscape and planters, a little more hardscape, but something that is safe and inviting for, for pedestrians to come across and access into the, into the university. Another one of the areas for connection that's important is the highway underpass as we move from uh, Bill Miller Plaza across uh, into the downtown area. Right now, uh, the existing condition is just parking lots uh, and no activation under there. And we see this as, as something that can evolve over time. Uh, in the shorter term, looking at really highlighting the areas where we have the street connections, and these gray boxes are really just areas that we think would be uh, important to make connections. Those can be through uh, temporary installations, uh, of student work, temporary art uh, installations, uh, or even things like food trucks that can really activate those crossings. And then long term, looking at something that can really uh, take more full advantage of that space underneath uh, the highway. Here's some examples of temporary installations like a farmer's market, 
or you've done some of this uh, already in San Antonio of art uh, installations underneath highways. And then long term, that space can become more park-like potentially uh, and have uh, even some activation of recreational facilities uh, underneath it. Um, obviously, that will take different forms. Uh, there's the things that, you know, plantings that need lower light, um, but really soften that area and make a greater uh, connection from downtown uh, to the campus on the west side. The last principle uh, that we talked about was to create a complete and comprehensive UTSA campus. We heard a need for affordable housing options without displacement. We heard a desire for housing to accommodate students and employees, and opportunities to share facilities uh, and serve with, uh, or services with the surrounding organizations. As far as housing, uh, right now we're just showing a variety of options and locations for where housing can occur. In this uh, building use plan, the orange color is housing, and we're trying to disperse that throughout uh, the campus areas that we're exploring to make sure that we have a variety of options. Some that are more uh, centrally located near downtown, uh, another option just west of the uh, interstate at Calvin Square, and then some additional options on the southwest side that might be more uh, lower scale. Um, and that's really meant to be, to, to offer variety in the future when different price points are needed, uh, different housing typologies are needed, and these are definitely uh, intended to explore the range of, of needs from students, faculty, staff, housing options. I want to dive into the districts a little bit, and we've just separated these out just for ease of looking at uh, of uh, different parts of the campus. The properties that the, currently, the university currently owns uh, west of I-10, I-35, uh, around Bill Miller Plaza. There's a housing opportunity at Calvin Square. A new pavilion that will really create an entry point and meant to be a public, uh, publicly accessible facility at the corner of Bill Miller Plaza as a welcoming uh, event into the plaza. The pedestrian crossing we talked about uh, from the west side and into buildings that would replace what's currently the Monterey building. One of the potential uses that we're looking at there would be a recreation and wellness center. And we're thinking that that would be uh, potentially a partnership with a community uh, organizations. So that's something not just used by uh, students and, and university individuals, but also open to the public. This rendering is just looking at the conceptual uh, pavilion that would be at the corner of uh, Buena Vista and the frontage road as an entry point into Bill Miller Plaza. So that's the existing Bill Miller Plaza uh, in the background of the image. And we looked at this, but again, just to, to point it out, a connection from the west side into an elevated plaza that can work together with Medina as a pedestrian environment, and potentially a wellness and recreation center that's open to the public. I'm sorry, does that facing south? That's facing south, so we're looking, uh, essentially kind of hovering over via Centro, looking south towards the campus. So, I'm sorry, where does it end at uh, on south of the top part of the street? What street is it? Uh, it's just across from the uh, the interstate off ramp. Um, so, if we, are you talking about like? So this is actually the interstate off ramp here, um, and that comes into Frio, right here. Right. And so that's the southern reach of those parcels. And so on these on these parcels, we're looking at a continuation of that Medina pedestrian mall and uh, some additional open space opportunities and some housing options as well. On the tech stop parcels, we're really exploring the potential of, uh, of utilizing that land. Currently there's uh, a university parking lot within the off ramps of, uh, of the interstate there. And we're looking at what would it take to actually utilize those parcels for some uh, programmatic elements. 
Um, that would mean some reconfiguring of the um, of the off ramp, which we're exploring. Uh, but it could uh, result in some parking structures as well as some green space and uh, active buildings. And then finally, the parcels that are east of the interstate, uh, where um, currently there's some temporary city facilities there, uh, as well as the jail uh, that's no longer in use in a surface parking lot. And so on those lots, we're looking at, you, you may have heard of the School of Data Science and the National Security Collaboration Center on the easternmost parcel there, and really expanding what is going on with San Pedro Creek into additional open space opportunities. And then an expanded business and career education building that would replace the jail location and have some additional green space that softens that edge by Casa Navarro, gives it just a little bit more breathing room uh, and connections between Casa Navarro and San Pedro Creek, and then a housing opportunity there uh, on the block just west of that. We will have all of these at four different stations, so we'll go, uh, we'll allow you know, plenty of time to look at, uh, look at these in more detail and ask questions. I do want to give just a brief uh, overview of the main campus, uh, which will be in an event tomorrow night, which we'll go into in more detail, um, but just to give you a little bit of a, a teaser of what's included in that plan. There are similarly some guiding principles for the main campus uh, um, development, which are similar but a little bit more geared towards that campus, uh, interdisciplinary collaboration and partnership opportunities, access to open space and the natural context, pedestrian oriented, similar to uh, the downtown campus, uh, as well as a mix of uses and connections between uses. In that plan, we're looking at really extending the Paseo network that exists on the campus today uh, and infusing some additional plazas and green spaces into the core of the campus, where right now it's really just on the periphery. And Park West is really uh, looked at as, as a potential partnership opportunity. You see some big bubbles there that are really not defined as, as program that the university needs uh, right now. But some additional recreational spaces are considered for Park West. <coughs> Conceptual rendering of the green space that could be in the center of campus with the main paseo moving across it here, uh, this is running north south. And then a new housing village uh, that would be a mixed use village that exists, uh, or that would be developed on campus with some additional plaza space. So from this we're going to, uh, we'll open up uh, to the different tables. We have a, a table on transportation, one on housing, one on open space and one on amenities. And we really want to hear your feedback because our next step is to take what we hear uh, and incorporate whatever is uh, possible into, um, into a draft plan that we'll be developing over the coming weeks uh, and then a final plan um, over the summer. But I do want to emphasize that the final plan is a report for the, that will be a roadmap, as was mentioned, for the, the campus. And it's really not the uh, not intended to be the end of the conversation. Uh, as was mentioned, NALCAB uh, is here. Jake White uh, is in the back from NALCAB. And they're just starting their conversations, particularly with the West Side, uh, how that partnership can continue to grow between the university and the West Side. So we're looking at a roadmap of a plan for the, uh, the development of the parcels. But as I mentioned, it's really not meant to be the end of the conversation, but really a start uh, of that conversation. So we, we hope that that will continue and grow, uh, mature over time. We do always, uh, as we've mentioned before, we have opportunities for uh, engagement after the fact. The information that's presented tonight uh, will be available on the website. Um, we have an email address that we always welcome input, uh, as well as a text message opportunity uh, for input. Uh, and we really would love to hear uh, everything that you have, uh, any concerns, questions, comments that you have, um, either tonight at the different stations or after the fact, if you come up with additional uh, comments that you want to submit, please do so. Thank you very much. Actually, if I may, yeah, um, if you can just recognize the audience here, 
um, some of us are differently abled and may not be able to get around station to station. So I feel like we have a big enough stage to span them across and that way this can be a real community engagement and you can take questions from community members and the person speaking on transportation or housing could address it from there so we all can hear. So you're, you're asking them to have to have people span span like the have. different stations across the stage. That way, audience members, community members can ask questions. If it's a question about housing, the person speaking about housing can reference it. That way, instead of fragmenting the conversation, can we keep it a collective conversation going on and put it all on the floor? Yeah, right. I, I'll volunteer to help to move the stations. So there's not, there's not four presentations. They're not, they're not they're presentations. Just they're just, yeah. You just get an opportunity to look at them and ask questions of whoever's there. I'm happy to. We can certainly take some questions. I would you know, like to give opportunities for those who maybe don't want to ask the question, uh, and or those who might not uh, uh, have the opportunity to broad group. But certainly happy to take some questions. Uh, I, I in the group. Sure. I'm going to be standing right here. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't think we have a problem with moving yeah, no, it. I just no, want no. to be clear to you that there's not presentations happening at the station. Yeah. Linda, maybe you should uh, talk about the process a little bit, like when we're scheduled. And we can move this up. Yeah, we can move that. There's not an issue that we can move that pretty easily. Thank you for that suggestion. What, what we wanted to do was to give everybody an opportunity to actually see those drawings up close because it's kind of hard to see them on the screen. And that way, and there's somebody, there'll be somebody at each one of these stations to answer questions, to give you, to, for you to make your comments to. There will be also, there are also, uh, at, the, at each station, there are flip chart pages and markers there. You can write that on there, or there will be somebody that will be writing down your comments as well. <coughs> And then you also should have a comment card where you can comment on each one of these categories. The transportation, housing, amenities, and open space. And if there's anything else that you want to comment on, there's also space down there for you to, for you to do that. Yes, ma'am. I, I actually have a, a growing fear and a growing concern. That when you talk about connecting with the west side, what does that mean and what kind of connection is that? Is it a real conversation or is it something like this where we get information? And, and then we ask to do comments, and it's all, you know, fragmented. I, I live on the south side, the near south side. Nobody ever asked me, you know, what, what's going to happen to us once the, the, the river was, was taken care of. We're getting all kinds of collateral effect, damage, by what happened with the river. Our neighborhood is getting decimated. And the same thing that's going to that's gonna happen here with this wonderful expansion of the university, is going to decimate the West Side and all of the folks who have been there for, for you know, for decades, for centuries already. And I, I just, I'm very uncomfortable with this idea that we're going to connect with the West Side. What, is, what does that mean, you know? And is there going to be an honest discussion about who's going to get displaced by this expansion? I, I just, I'm I just see a comment, those are my exact and I, I see a comment. It's, it's gone already on the South Side, and frankly. A house around the corner from where I live, live in a poor little house, $345,000 of two bedroom, one bath. That is going to just ruin our little neighborhood. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, absolutely, I think that the conversation is meant to continue in terms of what that actual physical connection is. Right now, what we're looking at is just a pedestrian connection, not an actual building or anything that the university is proposing uh, anywhere west of the, the railroad tracks. But I think um, we absolutely, as when things get to implementation, and even now in terms of what the plan suggests, uh, we absolutely want to have that feedback. And uh, as I mentioned, make sure that it's a it's an ongoing conversation. That the plan is a roadmap a framework to allow that to happen. Yeah. You drive up property values and people get displaced. It's not just the physical connection, right. it's the economic, financial, and social connections. 
that, that I think the physical one, we can see that in the, the little passage, uh, it's beautiful, but the economic financial, I think, is the concern that you're hearing. And are you, uh, are, how are you studying that? Because we haven't done a very good job of it. Yeah, and that's part of what, um, and my friends from now can tell me if I'm wrong, but that part of the uh, ongoing conversation of what the, uh, what the economic implications are. Yes. What for you and then and then you and then you and then you. <laughs> this young lady said and there are at least two microphones in this yes, room and I, it's a shame you ought to let her <laughs> say everything she said again yes. Yes. that microphone keeps going in and out so we'll try and see what happens. Sarah may answer a little bit about your, what you were talking about about the, the, community, the community partnership aspect and what we will be doing and that will be an ongoing separate sense of meetings this one is just about the master plan process and that community process is going to be continuing in an ongoing real kind of thing where we will work on that and that's Start with community, not master plan, and then we'll do a community later. No, start with community. That's a development 101. Start with community. Go back to your development. Go back to your development division. You have a program at the university. Ask them what the first step is in the development process. It's you start with the community. Well, we do look forward to continuing those conversations and. and in a real way, and we uh, um, have been appreciating all the input we've been getting along the way from this, and have involved community throughout this whole perspective, and we, that is our very intention to continue that. Yes, I wanted to say that I'm here with, I'm one of the tenants at the Farmer's Market uh, Plaza, and we seem to fall right in the middle of a lot of this uh, UTSA footprint. Uh, footprint. Um, 
My concern and the concern of all the tenants that are in the Mercado and the Farmers Market Plaza are concerned because we're at the end of our um, contracts with the city and they refuse to give us long-term contracts. And one of the reasons is because they say, oh, we wanna, we wanna finish a vision for Market Square. Things are gonna change at Market Square. And so regardless if they change, we still wanna be there. You're talking about people who have been there for generations. This is their livelihood. And so when you hear things that uh, the Farmers Market Plaza may be um, a facility for students. They may change it. We can't touch Mercado because that's historical, but this building may not be what it is right now. Um, that's concerning. You know, I see these things here about your um, missions on to promote small business, to do all these things with small business, but then you want to, I'm not going to say you, but I'm going to say that with this growth, it can put small business out of business. And that is not right. That is not, I don't want to hear, we want to hear your feedback, we want to listen, we want to, no, I, I want this to stop because you can't put people out just for the growth of the universe. I'm all about education, but for my business there, my small little business there, I was able to put my stepson through college. So people rely on these things for the same reasons you're trying to give to other students. And um, so it's, it's a very serious issue. And all the tenants there are very alarmed. And what is gonna happen to Market Square? What is gonna happen to, to uh, that uh, facility that is right in the center of all of this? Um, so I would like to know from you what your idea of is gonna happen to that uh, Market Square that is so valuable and is in so need of repair, so need of upkeep, so need of, it, it has been disregarded for so long. And then, you, you know, we hear about all this money being spent around it, and that um, whatever's not important there, whatever cannot be touched, we want it. We want to do something with that. Um, so it's, uh, well, there's a lot of people that have businesses there, and they're very, very scared about what is going to happen to the market store. Uh, absolutely, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I would say from, from our perspective, as planning uh, the area, the university parcels, we have looked at Market Square, just as you're talking about it, as a real asset. Um, and certainly we're not proposing changes to that from the university's perspective. Uh, the university is interested in how we can work together. Um, you know, in terms of underneath the highway, are there ways that you know that space can be utilized that will benefit uh, the businesses of Market Square? Uh, it can be uh, used in conjunction with the university, um, but certainly we want to make sure that there's connections and access. But uh, there's nothing in the plan that proposes changes to that because, like I said, we we see that absolutely as an asset to the neighborhood. Okay. What type of asset do you see it as? Like what, what do you see it as? What is the importance to you as far as Market Square? Well, I think it is the, the <laughs> local businesses and the the what more authentic environment that it uh, affords in that neighborhood. Um, certainly, I wouldn't want to see it be changed over to you know, generic kind of uh, chain uh, restaurants or things like that because that really changes the, the character of that. Um, and we would want to see uh, connections to that. Go ahead. I believe when you did the survey from students in terms of where they spend time, yeah. um, the Mercado was one of the the Mercado was sorry was one of the places that students identified. Pico de Gallo was obviously another one. So you know we have about 2,500 students downtown right now, if my numbers are right. To go up to 10,000, that would increase by fourfold the number of students who I would hope and would presume and would certainly be encouraging to be customers of those businesses, to be walking back and forth, to be taking advantage of our outstanding cultural assets in San Antonio. So th that's our vision. I, I, have, I, don't, I don't really see students spending a lot of money at uh, the farmer's market or the Mercado because a lot of times they don't have a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, but, but, it's, uh, but I'm just, I'm concerned about that area. Yeah, we, we, hear, we hear the concern, and, and it's, it's, we'll make a note of that. Well, I think, I think it's a little deeper than that because you can say... Can you head on for a minute because she was... Well, well I, just, I just want to address that really quickly because you can say at the university that you're concerned about it, but it's the residual effect. I think that's what 
the community is concerned about, UTSA has an intention, but then those intentions have a consequence. So, so I think what community wants is to know that UTSA is on their side, is gonna be advocating to save these businesses, to save these homes, that's, that's what they want. And they the want a clear statement saying, yeah. we have your back, and we are gonna be here to protect you not how we have in the last 50 years. Yeah. And the other piece of that, though, is that you you have to recognize that that's, a, that's the city of San Antonio operation. The it's University all of Texas. Our responsibility. It's I understand that. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying. It's our responsibility. Let me finish speaking. Let me, let me finish. Well, let, me, let, me, let me just finish my statement. It is let me finish my community. statement. I, I, well, all I'm saying is that that's the city of San Antonio facility and the, the University of Texas can say whatever they want about it, but it ultimately it's the city that's going to make the decision. And I understand that you, you're wanting the, the university to say, we've got your back. And I, I, they're, they're saying that they'll have conversations with you. The other thing that, that I'd just like to point out is that this is a master plan. It's not, it's, it's a guide. It's not the, the end and all and be all. It's not, it doesn't mean that every single thing that happens in here is going to happen the way it, it looks because it's not spelled out completely. So there's still a lot of conversations that have to happen with the community. There are a lot of things that have to have to occur in terms to, to move from the plan into the implementation. So this, this may be the last public meeting about this particular aspect of it, but there's going to have to be other meetings and other conversations in order for this thing to get implemented. The community so me, should have designed the master plan. Yeah. Well, I, I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Let me let, me let you. Um, hello, my name is Liliana Saldana, and I'm an associate professor in Mexican-American studies. I'm also from San Antonio, grew up on the south side. I'm here representing um, the university, but I'm also a member of the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center and a member of La Raza Faculty and Association. And I'm, I'm concerned about a couple issues. One is when you showed up the numbers that there are 941 students from the west side. Um, that's, that's really dismal and it really concerns me as a faculty member because um, I, I know that we have about anywhere from 33,000 to 38,000 enrolled students at UTSA. And so as a faculty member, I want to know what the university is going to do to ensure that there is more access to the university and also emphasize that that access should never come at the cost of decimating the west side or affecting the west side and displacing people in the west side to provide that access to higher education. Um, it makes me upset as a San Antoniana, as someone who is from San Antonio, that in the 30 years that we've been downtown, that we have only been able to, to, to enroll that number of students from the west side. We are literally over, not even a mile away from the downtown campus, and it's really upsetting to know that we have not done enough to provide access for our community. So that's one concern that I have. The second concern has to do with your language around partnerships. So um, I know that many of us, I see some of our UTSA students here are, are very active in the community. Some of our faculty are also very active in the community because we're from the community. So I wanna know what how you define partnership and how you see partnerships because um, that's an important part of, of what you're talking about, right? The expansion of the UTSA campus. So I, I want to know how the university is defining or conceptualizing partnerships and how you see the role of students and faculty in that process. perspective, we're hoping to increase these numbers substantially. They have risen, as you saw, relatively, um, it could be better since 2014, but we hope through having a much broader and deeper engagement here on our downtown campus, we can accelerate that growth. We have a shared goal around that. And granted, partnership, it's hard to define, right? Because you as a faculty member, that can be um, having an experiential learning experience in that community, whether it's at a beautiful facility like this or whether it's in the community. Um, it can also be an institutional partnership where we might be um, problem solving together around a community issue that we're trying to tackle. 
It can be um, students doing internships in small businesses to um, learn and apply what they're learning in the classroom in that setting. And so I'd hate to, def you know, to define in a narrow way what that can be, but our faculty and staff are at the and students are at that center, right? Because all of what we do is oriented towards our students. And I am 100% confident in both you and your colleagues about their commitment to expand those opportunities. What this master plan is about is providing a facility roadmap, um, you know, those buildings that anchor, essentially, our academic programs that should enable you as a faculty member or you all as students to be able to be engaged in our communities from that anchor point. Um, but that's only one point, and part of the reason about talking about the various neighborhoods is thinking about this as a pivot point and being able to engage more deeply. Um, you know, I'm new to San Antonio, so I'm still learning about both the history as, as well as our future. And I recognize that we have a special responsibility and obligation to do more for the West Side. And so I hope that at least that came across um, with respect to our intentions. We do have more work to do. Not just me, not just you, but all of us. And I hope this conversation is continuing about what that looks like in the future. Um, hi, my name is Yannette. I'm UTSA alum. Um, I wanted to see what sort of commitment does the university have to protecting not only homeowners, but also small businesses in the West Side. I think, as I was mentioned earlier, I, there might be really good intentions here, but what are the consequences of those intentions? Uh, Linda, you mentioned that that's something that the city um, has ultimate say on, but I think I think it's safe to to say that UTSA has a lot of pull with the city, right? You have power. Um, you have power in the city, so use that power for good and and make sure that you are protecting homeowners, protecting business owners, um, because if you're asking for what we're also asking, that makes it a lot easier. Um, I have major concerns about seeing our Guadalupe turn into Austin's Guadalupe, right? Because that's, uh, that's a street that's right in front of UT Austin, and it is just full of chain restaurants, of incredibly affordable boutiques, stupid coffee shops, all of that. Not that, you know, there's anything wrong with that, like, on the north side, uh, because I did go to the main campus, and we could definitely use it. Um, coffee shop that's open until 2 a.m. <laughs> um, but really, that like seeing our, our cultural Guadalupe turn into something like the drag that's that's really scary. Uh, and I know that it's going to have a really negative impact on on the neighborhood. It's definitely going to push people out um, because it's it, it's raising prices. So on your question on small businesses, I mean, we already have a partnership where we create you know, funding for small businesses and we want to do more. That's one of the things that we identify that we can expand. What other services could be done for the small services to be able to survive or to sustain, right? Maybe sustainable business practices and things like that. But so we want to expand on that model. But we just wanted to show, okay, yes, with what we're doing today, but there's opportunity for growth there as well. There are developers, there are real estate investors that are ready to pounce, if not have already done so. So we need to start protecting them today. And exactly, that's why we heard this last time we were here, and that's what been our focus since the last time we were here, to put something together that will answer those questions and those needs immediately. Okay, so maybe we should set a timeline today. I can't do that. Um, so, um, yeah, my parents uh, went to Lanier on Jefferson High School. I have a, a dental office, one of my patients, when he was here, um, and I've been there for 25 years. And so, um, so I'm kind of west side, I grew up you know, um, near Jefferson High School, which isn't too far from here. And I, you know, I have to say I, I'm excited about growth. I mean, when it comes to, to higher education, I mean, that's what we should all be striving for. You know, my dental office is just a few blocks from here. I've had people say, why don't you go to the north side? Well, this is my home. So um, I, I'm excited about higher education for the investment. So 
UTSA is not taking over, you know, parcels of homes. These are all already taken for. And they're downtown, and they're, they're right at the edge, you know, properties that, that aren't owned by homeowners. So I'm excited about higher education investing in close to the west side, because my office, built at 25 years, there's been hardly any development. Now you might have some that say that's a wonderful thing, keep, keep prices way down. I know people who move, and when they do better, then they move out to 1604, Alamo, you know, Alamo Downs, or all of that area. So I don't think we should be continuing to oppress the west side. You know, I think we need to be embracing this. And yes, you're right, anytime you have some development, then somebody's going to be like, oh, look, you look at all these students. There's going to be more marketing or business opportunities, but that's going to come. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the right direction to say. I think we should continue to keep it oppressed. That way, we can keep property taxes down, and then we, we keep it like decades in the past. So I think there's, there's some opportunity, especially when it comes to educating our youth. And so I think that's at, at the end of the day. That's an exciting thing. We should all be, you know, embracing this. So that's my take. Let me get you, this will be the last question and then we'll move into the station so y'all can see what's on the ground. Um, again, thank you so much for sharing everything that you all are trying to show us as far as your intentions of what you're looking at as far as bringing up our city as far as college and I think most of us agree, you know, education is very important, especially to the way I see it to our Hispanics, because we're here to try to help these kids. I know myself and Ms. Sanchez and other groups, we give a lot of scholarships to these kids at Lanier High School to let them better themselves, because we need to give them an opportunity, you know, at least to try it for a semester or a year. Uh, and and I, I know what you're saying as far as when you're talking about your properties, what your intentions are, but I think a lot of us are concerned about the neighborhoods, the community. I know we met, uh, I was not there at that time, but our COPS organization met with some people from UTSA some time back, and that was my concern. I said, you know, going over the bridge comes, going west, um, there's a lot of little mom and pop restaurants. What are you going to do when people are going to come in, and it's not you guys, it's your builders and, and developers that want to come in and buy this property and get them out and put a Starbucks or put a water burger. You know, why don't we stay there and let them stay there and help them fix up their restaurant and give them an opportunity to sell whatever they sell at these restaurants to these students. A lot of these students probably will never know what an enchilada is, you know. We want them to learn our heritage of this type of food. And I think um, I wasn't here the other time that this young lady was talking about a meeting prior to it. Um, it's, it's really great, but I see what you're doing, but I think somebody from the city of San Antonio needs to be here. Because it's a city, like she said, we have no control. Well, but if you tell the city of San Antonio, hey, these people are really upset about something, you all need to be there to answer to them. It's not you guys. It's the city of San Antonio that needs to be here to answer to us. Because we want to leave our community the way it is. We're, we're being as much as possible to help these people to stay there and you've got, I mean, there's people, I, I live a couple of blocks away from here, and it doesn't pass three times a week that I get letters that they want to buy my house, you know. And that's something that we're trying to prevent, is to leave our community alone. But, yes, expand this area. Uh, expand the business streets, you know, Brazos, Guadalupe Street, you know, and help them expand it. Don't build little houses. Let's come on, let's, let's try to make it work for everybody. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and move into the station so you'll get a chance. There'll be somebody at each one of the stations that can explain things. If you have any questions, you need to do. Oh. As we go into this station, which I always hate this process because I think, like other folks have said, we want to hear each other. We like to hear that we're actually affirming each other's ideas. Um, what I see is detail in the architectural designs, in the geography, um, in the height. I think our community is asking for that same detail, 
as it relates to how this is going to affect our community. That same detail, you know, um, and we, we haven't seen this. And this moves forward. It goes before zoning and planning and the city council. And it's rolling and moving, you know, fast. And we never answer the other questions and concerns that the community has been asking for a long time. We've always wanted a downtown UTSA, way before it got built on 1604 or wherever. But we also do not want to displace our families, right? My family's been here since the 1890s. My grandfather went to JT. There's a picture of him in 1906, 1907. I've moved back into the neighborhood, but I also see how, again, it's not that we don't want it, but how, Land values are going up, right? When those 10, 18 story student housing units go up, when you all spend millions of dollars buying that land, that's going to increase the value <coughs> of our next door neighbors. And this zip code, I mean, not the zip code, but it's the lowest income, 78207, but census block 1105 and 1106 are the poorest in the city. And they average twelve to fifteen thousand dollars average income. They can't afford any of the housing you're probably going to put out there. So we're concerned, right? So there's a reason, and everybody's raised it. You know, I'm glad the Mercado folks are here because they're going to get displaced as well. And the essence of the West Side, the, the reason is called Corazón de San Antonio. It can't, it'll disappear, right? And we can't have a beautiful Guadalupe and the community's no longer living here, right? New York Times wrote a story just last week about how our neighborhoods are being displaced all around 1604, beyond that, right? So they won't be able to come back to the downtown campus if they've been pushed out over there. And yeah, I went to Linear High School also. When you say people who are from the West Side, 78207 is totally different than 78228. I'd like to know what those 900 students, how many of those are 78207? OK, so if we can move to the stations, please. There are the four down here. There's uh, housing is here, open space, amenities, and transportation. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's why I'm going to do this. Yeah, it's an instant urban space. But it's kind of nice. uh, right now, there is currently um, just started with a shuttle. Uh, it's limited uh, it's a couple times a month. See, and I think that's one big thing if you're in schools that we don't socially travel to high schools yes, and if you drop them off here like well, you don't want to live in the drop them. Are they not doing the parking anymore since you all did the underground parking? No, the, parking, the, the underground parking is not enough. But under the bridge? Yes, ma'am. We still, we still, we still are leasing in this place. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. But the, the hope is to convert it into like a green space. No, it was still the same parking, uh, but right now you see it's just parking. There's no green space. Yeah, it's like a concrete jump. We're trying to make it nicer so that no people can, would like to walk. That's what they're referring to as a pedestrian. Oh, this needs a big part. There's a lot of partners in this. 
city or state, sure. uh, textile, county, uh, county. Uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of moving pieces. And obviously that's very preliminary, is kind of mapping out the spaces right now, right? So um, I appreciate it. Thank you.